It's Mona Lisa Day in Washington. In the West Statuary Hall of the National Gallery of Art, nearly 2,000 first-nighters, including the First Lady, stunning in a long pink dress, see President Kennedy introduce the world's most famous painting to Americans. France's Minister of Cultural Affairs, André Malraux and Madame Malraux, share the great moment when the 450-year-old masterpiece makes its first public appearance here. The president will pay tribute to French President de Gaulle as a man of vision, but will also spoof him a bit, making obvious reference to France's determination to build up an independent force. Mr. Minister, we in the United States are grateful for this loan from the leading artistic power in the world, France. In view of the recent meeting at Nassau, I must note further that this painting has been kept under careful French control and that France has even sent along its own Commander-in-Chief, Monsieur Malraux. And I want to make it clear that grateful as we are for this painting, we will continue to press ahead with the effort to develop an independent artistic force and power of our own. Mr. Minister, this painting is the second lady that the people of France have sent to the United States. And though she will not stay with us as long as the Statue of Liberty, our appreciation is equally great. The lady whose smile baffles on furlough from her age-old home in the Louvre is covered with thick shutterproof glass. The painting was loaned to the U.S. despite many forebodings in France. So the hands across the sea felicitations with the French nation are no less apparent when the ordinary folk begin to view the Mona Lisa the following day. In four weeks, she will hold court for some million persons before transfer to New York for exhibition at the Metropolitan Museum of Art. While the masterpiece basks in the glory of her first American showing, word comes that another famous lady and a Paris Louvre companion, Whistler's mother, may follow Mona Lisa to the United States. <laughs> 